I am at the Midway Geyser Basin in Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming. This is an incredible geothermal site because two of the largest hot springs in the world are right here. When the famous poet Rudyard Kipling visited this place, he referred to it as Hell's Half Acre and that name is kind of stuck. This is Excelsior Geyser, which was the largest geyser in the world. Its last true eruptions occurred during the 1880s, and those eruptions pretty much broke it. It was the most powerful eruption on Earth at the time because it sprayed up to 300 feet in the air. These violent eruptions caused damage to the silicon lining, so the gas leaked out and it lost its thermal energy. So now it's just a big spring. But all of a sudden in 1985 it erupted for two days, only at a maximum of 80 feet. But then it hasn't done anything again since, so maybe it will go off again in the 2080s. The highlight of Midway Geyser Basin is the Grand Prismatic Spring. It is the largest hot spring in Yellowstone and the third largest in the world. The other two are in New Zealand. It covers a massive expanse of land as water flows evenly on all sides. This caused the terraces all around it. The members of the Hayden Expedition named it, and its colors were a popular subject of their artist Thomas Moran. From the boardwalk level here, you get up close, but you can't see all that much. You can't quite get a perspective of how massive it is, even though it's pretty much all you can see. It is also very hot and steamy on this part of the boardwalk. All these layers of color are caused by thermophiles, which are bacteria that thrive in this heat, and the colors become increasingly cooler as it goes towards the center. That is the opal pool. And this is the turquoise pool, named by the Hayden Expedition for its gem-like blue water. This pool is connected with Excelsior Geyser. Now I'm going to hike up the hill behind Grand Prismatic Spring for an aerial view of it. This is going to be really cool. And there it is. This gives a totally different view from the ground level. All that steam is discharging 560 gallons of water into the air per minute. And you can see the thick steam coming from Excelsior Geyser back there. That is emitting about double the amount as Grand Prismatic Spring. Daddy. 
Grand Prismatic is much larger than a football field, and the crack in the ground where all the water comes through is 121 feet down. I highly recommend going up the hill to see it from above. Most people go on the boardwalk, but don't do this. It is totally worth it and really unbelievable when you see it from above. Now I'm at the Black Sand Basin, which is pretty close to Old Faithful and the Upper Geyser Basin, but it's very overlooked for that reason. This is a nice break from the crowds. That is Cliff Geyser, which is right on the edge of Iron Creek. When the geyser is active, it does usually go off daily, which it appears to be active. However, it didn't go off while I was here. This was handkerchief pool. Back in the old days, visitors would drop their handkerchiefs in and convection currents would bring it quickly back up to the surface freshly laundered. This is Sunset Lake, which has a shallow soft center bottom and it also has a large bacterial mat. It used to erupt before the big 1959 earthquake. There you can see the hills of the Yellowstone Caldera. So they're basically the rim of the super volcano. This is the Emerald Pool, named for its emerald green color. It has lower temperatures, which you can tell by the yellow bacteria and algae. Its lower temperature has actually been caused by objects being thrown in it over the years, and it may continue to lose color. Please check out my other Yellowstone videos and thanks for watching.